Here in the Triad, we know how to find the light in the dark. We're not letting coronavirus deflate our spirits. Female, male, turn pickup. Instead, we're dancing to our own beat. Letting adversity stitch us closer together. And for the first time in a long time, we're slowing down to stop and smell the roses. We're finding reasons to smile. Hey there, I'm Ben Briscoe. For the next 30 minutes, WFMY News 2 is celebrating all the good things going on right now. Because with the coronavirus craziness, it's important to remember there are still reasons to smile. Happy birthday, like five-year-old Therese in Greensboro, his family arranged for a surprise birthday parade with first responders flashing their lights and even some confetti. His classmates and friends showed up too. How was it? Fun. It was so fun. Yeah. He, I think he's in a little bit of a shock right now, um, as any five-year-old probably would be. This is pretty big. We just knew it was really important to okay. still make a memory, you know, for him, even though, you know, what's going on. From five years old to 81, birthdays of all ages should be celebrated, even during so social distancing. WF News 2's Kevin Kennedy was at a triad nursing home this week for a party that everyone should see. From outside her home, they sang. Family and friends sharing a moment with Gail Smith, who celebrates 81 years today. She's just a wonderful person. She loves life and she loves everybody. Smith was born with cerebral palsy. She has been at this nursing home the past eight years. We love her. And even though they're stuck inside and we can't get in there and give her a hug, she knows that we love her and we're here for her. The birthday girl wore a tiara and held a balloon while being serenaded through the windows. She understands that we have to be on precautions, but she's just she's just thrilled to death. Unable to celebrate and eat cake with her, Laura Smith thought this would be a pretty neat way to show their love. In this environment that we're in, we just wanted to make today special. We hope just to bring a little bit of brightness to her day. So as Gail looked out through the window, often waving and smiling, they wished her well, singing and smiling, waving and blowing kisses. God's granted to her to be here 81 years to be a blessing. She's a blessing to everybody. That includes the staff that now feels like family. They jumped at the chance to help Gail celebrate. It's not hard to please Gail. Things excite her and her birthday is very special to her. So this means a lot to us that Denise would remember us as well um, as a family to her. It wasn't the birthday they had hoped for, but the message is the same. Happy birthday they love Gail, and it appears the feeling Happy is mutual. Happy birthday. Kevin Kennedy, two wants to know. Happy birthday to you. This week, another big birthday, World War II veteran Ralph Windorf turned 100 years old. A few motorcycle clubs cruised past his home to honor him, and you got to hear Ralph's secret to a long life. I put two cherries in my Manhattan. <laughs> I have a feeling Ralph would love this celebration in Greensboro then. A few viewers called in to give us the tip about this one. A woman holding a sign saying, it's my birthday, you honk, I drink. Cheers to her creativity. Just about as colorful is this display we found across town. Party of Five events joined other balloon artists around the triad and the world to participate in one million bubbles of hope. The group says they want to remind the world there is hope and kindness still out there, even as we face the new reality of coronavirus. It makes me feel good to know that I'm bringing smiles to people in the neighborhood during, during this time right now. And all artists from 81 different countries participated in the event. We'll be right back. What a wonderful moment right there. All across North Carolina and the world, people are recovering from the coronavirus. In fact, according to John Hopkins, we hit a major milestone today. More than half a million people have now recovered from the virus. Folks like Sean Cook, who spent 16 days in the hospital. I'm just blessed to be here. I, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
His wife says she'll never be able to express how thankful she is for all the health care workers, people who risk their lives every day to save her husband. I would get focused on one part of his healing, but they were looking at 20 to 50 different things. We can all agree our hardworking medical professionals deserve a huge shout out. That's why High Point Police organized a surprise for them. Here's WFMI News 2's Jess Winters. Have you personally treated a patient for coronavirus? Yes. Kara Narrigan is a registered nurse on the front lines fighting the coronavirus at High Point Regional Emergency Department. We're just tackling another beast right now. Maybe a different beast, but the same bedside manner. I treat every patient um, the way that I want to be treated. And if I need to, to reach down and hold somebody's hand while I'm treating them, then that's what I'm doing. Sometimes it's a thankless job. We don't get thanked a lot for our job. Um, in fact, being an emergency room nurse, you get cussed out a lot. But High Point Police made their gratitude loud and clear this weekend. Said there's a whole bunch of police cars out front. What's going on? So I got up and I started to investigate. She discovered there was no crime. This was kindness. He was thanking us for being on the front lines and for continuing to do our job um, with everything that's going on. Officers surprised the nurses and doctors. It was awesome. By flashing their blue lights and applauding their everyday sacrifices. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You know, you really have to stop and ask yourself, how do you prepare um, to get ready for this? Sounds like there's no way to prepare for what's to come, but a little praise couldn't hurt. I want to thank High Point Police Department. Uh, they went out of their way to come and thank us. Jess Winters, WFMY News 2. More than $1 million has also been donated to honor health care workers. The Frontline Appreciation Group buys food from local restaurants and then gives those meals to hospital employees. It gets so emotional because when they come down, they smile and they thank you so much. It makes you want to be a better human being. The national group has chapters in two dozen states, including right here in North Carolina. We'll be right back. Hola, welcome back to Reasons to Smile. I've been using my downtime at home to try to do Rosetta Stone and learn Spanish. I've also got some friends who are taking college courses online for free. And then there is a new trend that WFM1 News 2's Eric Chilton found. People brushing up on their shagging skills. So it's always fun when, for me at least, when we talk about beach music and the shagging community, that's a big deal to me. You all know that out there. But, you know, we talk about how strong they feel about protecting the dance and protecting the music, that type of thing. And nobody knows that better than uh, Sam and Lisa West. They have been doing this uh, lately, online shagging tutorials, really, and lessons for free out there. How are you guys doing today? We are doing fabulous. How are you doing? Hope it's well. Yeah, and t tell us how you got started with this, because this is interesting. Well, that's our livelihood. We teach for a living uh, to the shag community, and we go around to different shag clubs. However, uh, being quarantined. quarantined, all those parties got canceled. However, we still have the means to do that online, and we just talked it over with some of our students and they were they were on board and female male turn pick up guys the better roll. In this crazy time people can turn in tune into our Facebook page and for that hour, hour and a half, they get to do something that they really enjoy and our it's like we've come to their living room to give them a little lesson and it puts just a little bit of normalcy back right there. We're doing it to keep the shag community still together and, and maybe invite some new some um, uh, some new folks to our community and, and learn a brand new dance and who knows how to <laughs> study in we could we could birth hundreds of new shaggers. That's awesome. That's always the goal. Hey thanks for spending time with us today. I appreciate it guys. We love what you're doing out there. Keep it up. Seems like a good time, just like what this grandmother of four is putting on in her show herself. This is Grandma Soda Sue coming to you live, calling out to all you homeschoolers out there. Sue Lee Nurson is a former PE teacher, so she decided to make a workout video for her grandkids to use during homeschooling. 
You exchange it overhead, say cheese. Here we go. I don't know if I can exchange it. <laughs> yeah, that's even a drone shot. It's easy to see why this video spread like wildfire online. The coolest part, she used a few props she already had in her garage and did this whole thing in one take. Nothing was written down and it wasn't this big plan. It just came together. Coming to you live from my drive way. There's a way that we're going to all make it together. Grandkids everywhere are also getting in on the act, making their own videos. Trey and Mai met one five-year-old who could teach us all a thing or two about his favorite insect. Welcome to Frank Mantis Zone Alarm. Five-year-old Jefferson knows a lot about these guys, the praying mantis. It's name from the praying position. And he's spreading his praying mantis knowledge. They have five eyes. Jefferson's Praying Mantis Journal airs daily on Facebook. Breaking news! Right before his school closed because of the coronavirus outbreak, Jefferson's kindergarten class was about to start a project on the Praying Mantis. Everyone even got a Praying Mantis egg that would eventually hatch. Our breaking news is that we have nymphs. Jefferson and his mom, Kristen, decided to continue the project from home and turn it into a video learning project for everyone to see, even his classmates. Jefferson absolutely loves presenting the information to people and he loves reading and he loves thinking that other people are learning along with him. And the big news, the eggs hatched. There you go. Yes. And the praying mantis released. Bye bye, little pray mantis. Kristen's advice to parents looking to make learning from home more fun let the child pick a subject they want to learn about. And then it becomes motivational because it's something your child already loves to do and they can incorporate their subjects and they can just run with it. Thank you for watching our show. That kid's got a future. You love seeing kids fired up about learning. Well, here's something else to get them excited. Carowinds is extending 2020 season passes. They will now be valid through 2021, and monthly billing has been suspended until the parks reopen. This is what we're supposed to do. It's what we're supposed to do. This Greensboro woman is also trying to help out. Charlie LaHoo put together what she called COVID-19 care kits and gave out more than 100 of them. Each kit was slightly different, but they all had things like soap and wipes. Some even came with face masks. And once she finished putting them together, she handed them out in a neighborhood off of Summit Avenue. She's not done either, saying she plans at least two other giveaways. It is mind blowing to see how many people are finding ways to help. The McCollin family in Greensboro came up with the Quarantine 15 t-shirt. It's a play on the freshman 15 you might gain when you move away to college. I know I'm gaining weight during this quarantine. <laughs> the family thought it would be a fun way to remember this time while also raising money for several Greensboro restaurants. The Quarantine 15 was kind of a play on now we're all stay at home, we can order takeout, we're not cooking, we have to have downtime, be a little bit more relaxed. Um, so we might be gaining a little bit of weight during this time. Mom Chrissy says a thousand t-shirts would raise more than $14,000 for Greensboro restaurants. From a group of people supporting businesses to a business designed to help people. WFMY News 2's Tahitian Moyes talked with Winston-Salem siblings who found a fun way to give back by starting their own business. It all started with a YouTube video on how to make bagels. I made a batch and then kind of thought to like give some to our neighbors and then we were like, we can make this bigger. So a few weeks ago, 17-year-old Posey Lester Niles and her 20-year-old brother Finn decided to start a bagel company called Bone Shaker Bagels. They used to call bikes Bone Shaker Bikes because they were on tires without rims and so you can imagine a metal wheel going down cobblestone and it really shakes your body. The pair makes three dozen bagels a day and hand delivers them by bike throughout Winston-Salem. We take orders until that fills up and then we take orders for the next day. And right now we're full until May. They ask for donations of $8 for each half dozen and $15 for each dozen. All proceeds go to a charity of the customer's choice. The process is pretty intensive. So you have to make them the night before. You make the dough, let it rise, you knead the dough, um, you form the bagels, and then leave them in the refrigerator overnight. Then in the morning, they boil, top, 
and bake the bagels. Posey even designed the print that's placed on each bag. She says it's worth the hard work. It's just so much bigger than we would have ever imagined. As of Sunday, they raised more than $1,000. The siblings plan to retire this business in May as they head to their summer jobs in Vermont. But they've encouraged four of their friends to start bread businesses in their city and donate the money to charity. We might end, but those other ones might keep going. Let's keep the good news going with what you're saying on Facebook. WFM News 2's Megan Malaris asked you to share something good on her page. Boy, did you guys have some good answers. Diane wrote it was her birthday and she got to spend time with her grandbabies. Oh, and she said she finally found toilet paper. Anne's two daughters are doing well with online school. She said it's a little thing but makes her smile as a mom. Janet is proud and thankful to be an essential worker. She's an insurance agent and was glad to help people after Monday's storms. Lauren got a promotion at work. Debbie found out a few weeks ago she's going to be a grandmother and she's over the moon. And Angela is thankful for answered prayers and little reminders throughout the day that God is with us during these troubled times. The truth right there. Also flooding our feed this week were pictures of your cat co-workers. With so many people working from home, our pets sure do know how to get in the way. But it's okay when they are this cute. And you guys have been sharing all the ways you're social distancing, like this walk in Greensboro. What about using a hockey stick to make sure you're staying six feet apart? Or even putting those tape marks on your floor at home like they do at stores? Clearly a joke, but man, that is a good one. You even found a way to uphold one of Easter's best traditions, the stunning church choir performances. Damon Fr Fresman talked with one choir who gave everything they could to come together, even though they can't be together in person. This Holy Week, hundreds of Christians from across the world are finding a unique way to worship. Joining their voices in song, virtually. This is the Worldwide Virtual Easter Choir, and Junius Dotson with Discipleship Ministries is the organizer. It is some, somewhat stirring to not be able uh, to be with people, not being able to celebrate together. Since many churches across the globe are unable to open for worship this weekend, Dotson says the call was put out to record this hymn. Jesus. Christ the Lord is risen today. I think people were feeling the need uh, to be in community with each other, even as we are socially distanced. The virtual choir project was commissioned by the United Methodist Church and includes about 400 singers from across the U.S., Africa, the Philippines, and Eastern Europe, every corner of the world. Uh, some persons are singing with family units. Some persons were singing in their pajamas. I saw some persons in their choir robes. Organizers call this virtual choir and its message a stunning representation of Christianity, even in the midst of crisis. During trying times, music can work wonders. Music is going to bring us together in ways that we can't physically be together right now. Right now, lots of people singing hallelujah if they can find toilet paper somewhere. And this shortage in toilet paper has caused a must-see item. William Joy talked with a bakery owner who created a practical joke that's left a whole lot of people rolling in laughter. Well, that was my first initial thought, like there's no way we're going to make it through this without our wedding. Tarika Lofton needed something. Her business at Loft 22 Cakes is built around elegant wedding cakes. I just prayed. I just said, I don't want to close. I was like, you got to help me, Lord. Just give me some inspiration. She started quarantine cakes with PSAs, but an employee came up with the idea of selling the one thing everyone is selling out of toilet paper. We've done whole stadiums and you would have thought that would have been like the big thing, but tissue paper, who knew? She's gone from nearly closing to getting another phone line installed this week. Because the phones have blown up, the, the voicemails are, you can't leave a voicemail, a lot of calls are dropping because so many people are calling at one time. Fold it back. They're $50 each, including tax, and naturally feed up to about 10 people. And those cakes simply have just tickled people. I can't tell you how many people are telling us like they just found it hilarious. She's already sold 200 in two weeks and has about a two day wait for one now. They're all over Fort Worth, even the, even our mayor has had one. The inside can be either funfetti or chocolate and they're particularly popular for birthdays. The tissue paper has been like the one thing that they, you know, had for their birthday that just made it funny, made it better. Tarika Lofton needed something to keep her business going but we all 
kind of needed something to joke about. Middle of this dark time, people are finding joy and reasons to laugh and still smile and come together. We know you have reasons to laugh and come together too, so take a swipe at getting it shared right here on TV. Text us your reasons to smile to 336-379-5775. We'll be sharing your thoughts all weekend long. Hey, thanks for spending this time with us. WFMY News 2 at 6 starts after the break.